In this training video, we will go over how to import articles and import transactions. First, we'll start with importing articles. The first step that you'll want to do before you import articles is you want to go to the start on your computer. Then you want to go to computer. Then you want to use a network drive or a C drive, but I would suggest using a network drive. That way other people in your company can have access to the imports. So you go to your network drive. You right click in the white and you want to create a folder called Windfall, Windfall Article Imports. And then you'll want to create another folder by right clicking in the white, select new and hit folder. Windfall Article Imports Archive. You'll want to create two, those two folders before you begin importing your articles. <clears throat> Once you create those two folders, then you can go into Microsoft Excel And this is how we're going to start importing articles. As um, you've seen, when you create articles manually, you need to include the six required fields. The six required fields, once again, are article number, class, category, type, description, and reader description. Those six fields are required when you need to import any articles. You must have those six fields on the Excel sheet in order to import. You can have any additional fields that you wanted to capture, such as attributes, manufacturer, width, depth, height, anything under the article tab in Windfall, you can put on the Excel sheet in order to import. So if we go into our customer hotel, go into the article tab, Anything listed down below here, you can put on the Excel sheet, but you must have these six required fields on the Excel sheet. I typically put um, each required field in as a header for each column. That way I know which field I need to populate. So I'm going to put, I have reader description. I'm going to also add manufacturer and attribute one just to show. So what you would do now is you would either A, open your Excel sheet from your customer and copy and paste the fields that they provided to you. Um, most of the time they're not going to have the fields such as category, class, and type on the Excel sheet they send you. They'll typically just have the part number and the description. So what you'll do is you'll copy the part number and paste it into the article number field and copy the description information and paste it into the description field on the Excel sheet. Um, you cannot have any duplicates, so if you have a, you probably won't run into a case where you have the same part number twice, but you do not want to have any duplicates. So we'll put one in. Um, we'll use CH300. Our class is going to be Hotel Project. Our category will be, we'll use... We'll use electric, type, we'll do lighting, and description, we're going to put in um, a standing lamp. And for my reader description, I'm going to put in CH300 space standing lamp. Remember, the reader description is what appears on the scanner if you select the option to have a drop-down list of your articles on the scanner. Manufacturer, we'll put Herman Miller. And attribute one is going to, I'm going to use as material, and I'm going to put stainless steel. So you just go through and you have to fill out every field that's required for each piece. If, for example, I have another one um, and I want to do a mattress, let's say. So I do mattress, I make up an article number, or I use my part number. My class is hotel project. My category will be bedding, type, 
King Mattress. Description, Serta King Mattress. And then my reader description, I'll put in the article number first in case I use the drop down, followed by the description. In this um, scenario, I'll skip manufacturer and I'll skip attribute one. And that's fine as long as I have my six required fields to fill out. So that's what you do. You just continually add all the articles that you want to import for a given customer. Remember, everything in the software is customer specific. So this sheet here, we're going to import for our hotel customer. <clears throat> and then you just continually keep going. So once you have all your articles in your Excel sheet, then the next step is, is you need to delete Sheet 2. Right-click on Sheet 2, select Delete. Right-click on Sheet 3, select Delete. Also, with articles, you cannot have any what we call tick marks. And what tick marks are are apostrophes or quotes, quotations. Um, so if you're using feet or inches, you'll want to use the verbiage FT or IN. Um, you don't want to use anything such as apostrophes or quotes because they are SQL commands and Windfall will not accept them. So do not use any tick marks when creating articles within the interface, on the scanner, or when you're importing any articles. Okay, so we deleted our two sheets. Our next step is we need to save our Excel sheet. Also, before you save your Excel sheet, you cannot have it open when you're importing the articles. You have to have it closed. So what I always do is I, on a piece of paper, I write down whatever I have in each column. So on a piece of paper, I write down column A is article number, column B is class, column C is category, D is type, E is description, F is reader description, G is manufacturer, and H is attribute one. So I write that down on a piece of paper because I'm going to have to save and close the document. So you go up to File, you select Save As, and then you want to save it into the folder that we created right away under your network drive, Windfall Article Imports. So you search for where you saved the folder, or created the folder, Windfall Article Imports, and then you name the file whatever you like to name it. And then you must save it as an Excel 97 2003 workbook. That'll save it as an extension of XLS. You do not want, with the new Microsoft um, Office, the default is the extension XLS X. So you want to make sure you save it as Excel 97 2003 workbook. So then you save, and then you close the Excel sheet. The Excel sheet cannot be open when you import. Then once you have the Excel sheet filled out and saved, you then go into Windfall and you click on the article or the import icon, excuse me. This is the import icon up here. And once again, if you hover over any of the icons, they tell you what they are. So you click on the import icon. Then you'll see it says loads available for import. Then we have driver inventory loads, record storage loads, purchase order loads, article import, transaction import. You want to make sure you select the article import tab because that's what we're importing is articles. Then the first time you do this setup, you must go to the configuration button. Then you find in this configuration list, you find the article import file right here. And it says look for article files in this directory. So you must browse to where you saved the file at. And to browse, you hit this box here. You select the drive you saved it on. Double click over here. And then you find the folder, the Windfall Article Import folder. Oh, that's the archive one. We don't want the archive one, we want the first one, Windfall Article Imports. And say OK. So now it's going to find your file because you set the path to where you saved it. Down below it says move files to this directory after import. Now this is where you're going to save or browse to the folder that you created that said windfall article imports archived. Because once the Excel sheet is imported, it needs to go into a new folder such as archived so it no longer shows in the list to select from. So you browse, select the drive, 
double click over here, scroll down and find Windfall Article Imports Archive, select OK. So now you have under Article Import Files, look for the files in this directory, this path to where you saved them, and then once they're imported, move the files to this directory after import, which is Windfall Article Imports Archive. It's a separate folder. If you set this the first time like this and you consistently save your Excel sheets to this directory, this folder, see Windfall Article Imports, then you'll never have to go into this configuration tab again and keep setting the path. So my suggestion would be to set this folder on your computer and consistently save any imports into that same directory so you don't have to keep coming in to configure and reset the path. So once you've completed this, you click OK and refresh. And now you can see your file is located under the article import tab. It says file name article import. If you do not set the folder, the um, move folder directory as an archive folder, then this file will always stay on the screen. And if you consistently import multiple Excel sheets, you'll end up with a big long list of files. So what you do is you select your file to import by putting a checkbox. You click the import button, and then you want to select the customer you're importing the Excel sheet into. So we select hotel, hit select, and then here brings up the map article import fields for hotel. So this is why I suggested writing down what is in each column because the Excel sheet needs to be closed when importing. So now this is where we select what fields are in which columns. So column A we select article number because that's what we have. Column B, we from the drop down we select class. On yours, yours will be populated with all nuns the first time you select. So you'll have to do this. C is category, D is type. E is description, F is reader description, G is <clears throat> manufacturer, H is attribute 1. Also, if you save um, an Excel sheet as such as like a template and keep the columns the same each time and then continually Resave the file as a new name and keep that template. You don't have to go in here each time and reselect the columns if you consistently keep the columns the same. So that'll save you time in the long run. Also, if you don't want to use these other columns and they're blank, make sure they're all set to none. So once you have all your columns selected, you hit save. And then it says imported two articles for customer hotel. You'll also notice on the bottom left it says record two of two processed. Once you have a longer list of articles to import, this you'll watch and you'll see that this number moves up slower because I only had two article numbers to import and went quickly. So then you say OK, and now that file no longer shows under the article import tab. It has moved to the other folder. So our articles are imported. We can hit close. And then you can go into the customer, go into your article tab, and you'll see that we imported, this is one of our articles, the King Mattress, and CH300. Those are the two articles we imported. So if you have the capability to get an Excel sheet from your customer, um, you can easily upload it right into Windfall through using Excel. So that's how you import articles. Now we're going to go over importing transactions. Um, typically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use a scanner to bring your transactions into Windfall. Um, it is That way you're out in the warehouse and you're touching each individual piece, putting a sticker on it, capturing the data, capturing the article, capturing the description and the location. But in some cases, some people don't purchase scanners or um, they, they want to import the articles on the Excel sheet. Um, so we, we've come up with this option. We don't have it in older versions of Windfall. This is one of our newer enhancements. So this is an option to use. Um, I would not suggest using it unless you have to or you don't retain a scanner, but um, this is how you do it. What we have on our customer site are Excel sheets for 
transaction imports. You can do transaction Im import sheets. You can do moves, outs. Any activity you can do on the scanner, you can do through this transaction import Excel file. So any activity code. And what I'm going to show you here is INS. So on, like I was saying, on our customer site, we'll have all the Excel sheets that you can use as a template to fill out each form, save, and import into your system. So here is the Excel sheet for an inventory transaction in import. And as you can see, we have certain headers highlighted in yellow. That means these are required fields that you have to fill out in order to, for the import sheet to work accurately. So what we're going to do is we're going to work left to right filling out the columns that we need to import. Now this is importing transactions, which means it's taking the place of the scanner. We're going to collect quantities, date, times, users, tags, and location. So this is a, an option to use in place of a scanner. So we'll start working left to right. And like I said, the yellow is required. Any other field is optional to fill out. You do not have to fill them out, but if you want to retain that information for those given pieces, I would fill out that data. So we'll start with the first one. Receive date. This is the receive date that you're going to receive the item. So we'll do 9 Receive time. What time are you receiving this item? Username. What is the username of the person that is importing this transaction? So whatever you create in Windfall under Security Administration for usernames and passwords, that is the username that you must provide. I'll just use system. Article number. Um, in this case, uh, we'll say in this scenario that we are using an article number. You do not have to have an article number. Remember that there are three different types of ways to bring in inventory. One is through a tag number alone. Two is through an article alone. And three is with a tag and an article. And in this scenario here, I'm going to use a tag and an article number. So my article number is going to be CH100. And remember, the article numbers have to be created first in Windfall before you can apply them here. Just like the scanner, you cannot create articles or locations on the scanner. You can only create them through the Windfall interface first. Everything else is just data entry. Tag number. I'm not going to fill out width, depth, height, or manufacturer because that's all tied into my article. Then I keep going. Warehouse code, you have to put in your warehouse code, and in this case our warehouse code is WH1 because that is my warehouse code designated when I set up Windfall. So if you don't know what your warehouse code is, you can go into Windfall and click on Warehouses, and it is listed right here. So there's my warehouse code. My location type, what is the type of location I'm putting this piece in? I'm going to say Floor. And then it wants to know my location tag, the actual name of the location. So I'm going to say F01. And remember, just like the articles, these locations have to be created in Windfall first before you can import them. Order number, what order number is this tied to? Once again, in Windfall we discussed how you can have multiple order numbers for a customer or just one order number. So if you want to go into the customer, go into the order tab, you can select which order you want to use. And remember, that must be created prior to importing any Excel sheet. So we'll use hotel. This field is quantity. What is the quantity that I'm assigning? Say one. Agent code. Agent code is required. Remember, we set up agent code on our first basic setup. Once again, if you do not remember what your agent code is, you can go back into Windfall and go up to Tools, Configure, Agents and that'll list your agent code right there. So I go back to my Excel sheet and my agent code is 456. Then we go keep working left to right and we go over to activity code. Activity code stands for on the scanner it asks select your activity. So what are you doing? Are you doing an in? Are you doing a move? Are you doing an out? Are you doing an inventory move update? Whatever activity you're doing you have to tell the Excel sheet. So I'm saying I'm doing an in. Then it wants to know for which customer are you doing this activity. So my customer name is hotel. And the customer name has to be the same as it is in Windfall. 
and that's it. That's all that's required. So like I said before, you can fill out any other data that you wish, or you can just fill out the required fields. Now, if I was doing something like a tag number without an article number, I would want more data. So for example, I'm just going to copy and paste this down. It doesn't want me to. We'll do 9 a.m. again. We'll do the user system. We're not going to use an article number this time. We're going to just do a tag. So I'll do 2001253646 because you cannot have any or yeah four six because you cannot have any duplicate tags in windfall so I'm going to say the width is two the depth is two or I'll do twelve by nine by twelve manufacturer I'll say no part number Q UDF1, I'll think, um, say I set up my UDFs in Windfall. In Windfall for this customer hotel, my UDFs are under configuration, PO, room number, and floor. So for UDF1, my PO number would be whatever it may be. My room number will be 12112, and my floor will be 44. So if you just use tag, you're going to have to fill out a lot more data because on a tag number, you fill out the data as you're collecting the piece. Article number, you fill out the data before you receive the piece, like we talked about before. What other data fields do we need here? Well, these will be our data fields that we use. So that's all you must do is just go through and then continue. Warehouse one, location type, we're gonna put it in floor. In this instance, I'm gonna put it in F02 for which customer, hotel. My quantity will be one. My agent code will be 456. My activity code is an in. My cus name is hotel. I'm sorry, I said customer name. I meant order number on this one, but cus name is hotel. So you just continue along and you enter in all the data that you want to import into Windfall as inventory. So once you're completed, the next step you do is, is you delete sheet two and three. If you have other sheets down below, you want to delete those sheets. And then also you want to Highlight this, shift control end, and then you want to delete all those extra rows. So you highlight the last column that are the last row that you've used, like this, then you hit shift control end on your computer, and you delete those columns or those rows. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Or you can just hit shift control and, and hit the delete button, that works too. So once you're finished with this, then you wanna save, because you can't have the Excel sheet just like articles, you can't have it open to import. So you go to file, save as, and then you save it to where you want to save it at under Windfall Article Imports folder that we created before for the articles. Or you can create separate folders by going to Start, Computer, go into your Network Drive, right click in the white and hit New Folder. And maybe we want to put our transaction imports in a separate folder than we do our article imports. So we say Windfall Transaction Imports. And then we create another folder called Windfall Transaction 
imports archive. That way we can keep our article imports separate from our transaction imports. Also, what's a nice thing to do is if you're doing multiple transaction imports for multiple customers, what you can do is, and when you're creating the folder, is go into the folder Windfall Transaction Imports, right click, go to New, and create a folder for each customer you do transaction imports for. That way you can keep them separated and you can keep it nice and clean. So I can create another folder called Hotel, which is my customer name, under the Windfall Transaction Imports folder. That's just a nice way to keep everything separated and together. So then we go back to our import sheet. We go to File, Save As. We go to where we created and saved our folder, Windfall Transaction Imports. Go into the customer folder that we want to import the transactions for. Name, the file name. And then uh, once again, you want to make sure you save the type as Excel 97-2003 workbook. Then you hit save, and then you close the sheet. You must make sure you close the Excel sheet anytime you want to import transactions or articles. Then you go into Windfall. You go into the import icon. We find transaction import tab because that's what we're importing as transactions. Then we go to configure. And then we go down to transaction import files because we're importing transactions, not articles. And then we set our path for our transaction imports. So we browse to where we created those folders again. So you hit the browse button, select the drive they're on, double click, and scroll down and find that folder, transaction imports, and open hotel. You say OK. So you can see it says, look for transactions files in this directory. See Windfall Transaction Imports, Hotel. Then we have move files to this directory after import. We want to browse to the folder that we created for archive imports. So we select our drive. We double click here. We scroll down to Windfall Transaction Imports, Archive. Select OK. And now we have both paths set for transaction imports. And once again, just like the article imports, if you consistently save to these drives and these folders each time, every time, you don't have to go into configure and reconfigure the path. So you say OK, refresh, I'm going to close, reopen, and here's our file, transaction import, hotel import for transactions. You check your box, hit import. And then once again, you'll want to write down whatever you put for each of those. So I forgot to write it on my piece of paper, so I'm going to go back into my Excel sheet and see what I put for each of my columns. Just like the article import. So column B, I have receive date. C is receive time. E is user ID, F is article number, G is tag number, H is width, I is depth, J is height, L is manufacturer, M is part number, N is UDF1, O is UDF2, P is UDF3, then I scroll over. AB is warehouse code. AC is location type. AD is location tag. AF is order number. AG is quantity. AI is agent code. AM is activity code. AN is customer name. So just like before, you want to write down what column is what. So now i got to close my sheet, and now I can set my columns. Column A, I don't have anything in column A, so I leave that as none. Column B is receive date. 
Column C is receive time. E is user ID, so I skip D. Initials. It's initials, not user ID. E is initials. F is article number. G is tag number. H is with. I is depth. J is height. L is manufacturer. M is part number. N is UDF1. O is UDF2. So you just go through and assign each one its column. AB is warehouse code. Now these are all required, so I have to fill them all out. AC is location type. AD is location tag. AF is order number. AG is quantity. AI is agent, AM is activity, and AN is customer. Now you'll notice with each um, Excel sheet that you import, what, um, on ins certain fields are required, on move certain fields are required, and on outs certain fields are required. So each one will have different fields that are required. Ins have the most fields. So after you fill out all the columns with the headers, you click Save, and it will say Imported Two Transactions for Customer. And you'll also notice at the bottom, just like the record storage, it says Recorded Two of Two Processed. Once you have a longer string of transactions to import, you'll notice that it runs through each. But when it's finished, you click OK. The transaction no longer appears here because it's moved to the Archive folder. Then you click close, and now you can go into the customer and look at your transactions. So you go, or first you have to tra uh, process them through transactions. So they're down at the bottom, so you double click on transactions with problems. And then you hit process all, save. And just like before, um, your T has to be running when we talk about transaction processor um, on another uh, windfall training video on the transaction processor. You'll know you'll have to start the T and they'll start processing. And then you hit refresh. And two out of the four went in because we had two transactions. Those other four transactions are older transactions that have not been identified or fixed yet. So our two transactions went in. So we go into the customer. And we go into our inventory tab. Hit show all orders because we have multiple order numbers. Whatever order number you have highlighted is what you're looking at in inventory. See how Tower C was highlighted? That's why we didn't see any of our inventory because we brought all that inventory under the hotel order. So I can either click show all orders to view all the inventory or I could have just highlighted hotel under the order tab, gone back into inventory and seen my inventory. 
So those are the two pieces that we brought in. So that's how you do inventory inbound transactions. And also, like I said before, if you want to use our templates, it's on our customer website at www.windfallonline.com slash customer. And then from that website, you can get all the import transaction sheets. Also, that's the same website as clicking on our eye, our information icon. If you click here, this will take you directly to our website. And that concludes the transaction article imports.